talked to those hikers back there. They said they've seen quite a few bear tracks down here. So hopefully we don't have one of those guys come visit our, our little camp here. So we're out. This is a, an island of the, in the green swap of pines. It's a managed forest area. So it's not too far up here to campsite. And it's a beautiful, beautiful campsite. All right, so we're gonna make a turn in here to the camp, and uh, it's Sunday afternoon. We should pretty much have our pick. Looks like there's a couple people here. Um, so we want to be as far away from everybody as possible. So here we are, uh, right now we're the only people here. Uh, we do have some more campers over there, but they're not home right now. So it's about 3, 3, 3.15 in the afternoon. It's, clouds are coming in a little bit. That's making it nice, it's cooling off some. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get a fire started and start burning down some coals. And I see there's lots of loose uh, tinder and limbs around here. So we'll go ahead and start gathering some of that up. So here's our fire pit, it's in pretty good shape, but I do notice the first thing you wanna look at in here, got some pine logs in there, all right? You definitely don't want the pine logs in your in your fire pit. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we got active fire ants. We do, as usual. So let me show you those so guys. As you can see, them little suckers. I disturbed their nest and they're going everywhere. So we got two choices here. We can just go ahead and work around them like we did last time, or we can pick another site. So let's go see if the options are any better anywhere else. All right, so I walked over here and just a hundred yards away, and here's another site. Hey, and there's already some wood already gathered here. It's kind of rotten though, rotten looking wood. And we got a water spigot right there, non-potable, but we can use that to wash our hands off with. So I think we're just gonna, Boot and uh, uh, reboot and move right over here and uh, use this site instead, and that way we won't have to fight the ants. I hate those things. Alright, so everything in this fire pit is oak. So we'll go ahead and put a, that's two paper towels with about a tablespoon of vegetable oil on it. And then we'll go ahead and just use this stuff that's already here to kind of support the tender. This is back with just finding some more, but we got plenty here close by. Get a nice bit of tender going on there. Light her up. Let's do it.
So when I'm starting a cooking fire, I like to start out with two big, nice dry pieces on each side. Let's move these guys out of the way for a minute. And that just kind of helps contain it into a concentrated area. Okay, so let's rake these rest of these up in there. And this is a nice flat bottom. This fire pit hadn't been here very long, so that's pretty awesome. And these are starting to go, and these pieces on the side are also going to help you be able to just bridge bigger, bigger stuff across there. This this wood is still damp. Uh, it rained uh, for 16 hours earlier this week, so. See if we can get that enough heat on that to get it starting uh, to dry out, get our cooking fire started. do out here at the camp today is an acorn squash it is fall it's uh, close to Halloween and I'm trying to stay on a low carb diet so we're gonna go ahead open this guy up real quick I'm gonna split him right in half and we'll scoop these seeds out now we are out here on public land so we don't want any kind of like invasive stuff you know growing out here so I wouldn't just toss these seeds over in the woods somewhere because those seeds are, are going to make a, a squash eventually so you don't want to throw the fresh seeds out into public in the public in the, anywhere in that forest parks public land anywhere really um, where they might have a chance of growing or something might eat them that shouldn't be eating them and have issues. So we're gonna go ahead and clean out those cavities real good, both of them. And then uh, we're gonna prep them to bake right on the campfire. All right, so they're not gonna need a lot. These are gonna be uh, pretty flavorful on their own. I brought a little bit of uh, veggie oil. I'm gonna pour a little bit of that in each little cavity. And then I'm gonna take a paper towel. I'm gonna soak that up out of the cavity, use it for its own bowl. I'm gonna smear it all over it okay this is going to keep it from sticking to anything so I'm getting the skin all the little ridges and everything all the way around the same thing with this one the flesh side skin side just get them nice and old up there then we're gonna get them in some luma full lay them in there by the fire all right, well, last but not least, we're gonna give it some Seminole Swamp Season. That's some fire in a swamp right there. Awesome on everything. Today is a rabbit and uh, if you hunt you know you're gonna probably have that opportunity to get yourself a rabbit every once in a while and um, you know they're freaking awesome okay this one we did not hunt hunting season not open yet here 
in Florida. So this is domestic rabbit, but you're going to cook a, a, <clears throat> a wild rabbit, excuse me, exactly the same way you can do with this recipe here. And I like to come right down over that breastbone, get all that, um, that meat off of them ribs, peel that down with my front shoulders, okay? Get as much of that off of there as you can so you're not wasting anything. Even some of that uh, meat from the side of the neck. All right, I got them front shoulders off of there. Now this front part up here with the ribs, I usually just angle back up underneath there. All right, get down to where the first rib is. And let's find it here, we're pretty close. You want to angle back toward his head though because the ribs are running at an angle. Alright, then wherever that junction is, go ahead and just take them that uh, rib cage and that neck off there. Now if you want to cook all that down and make a stock with it or uh, give it to your dog, your dog's going to love it. Okay, um, But there's, there's so many small bones in this part that really doesn't make sense to try to cook with it. Now this back, that's a totally different thing. So let's go ahead and take the back legs off of him first. We're going to come in here right at the thigh bone joint. I'm going to snap him backwards. Right. Hopefully we will anyway. All right. We got the uh, back leg off. Do the same thing with the other side. If you hit it in the right spot, it comes right off. Now there's a back loin right here. Is awesome, but you can see it's got these really, really thin strips of meat right here. Again, I usually give those to the dog, especially if you got a rabbit dog. Uh, cook them up a little bit, they're going to love them. And then this back part, I usually cut into two pieces just to make it more manageable. Now what we're going to do with them next is give them good seasoning, and then I'm going to throw a twist at you. We're going to go ahead and take uh, one of our favorite seasons, Seminole Swamp Season. This is the Fire and Swamp version. I'm going to go ahead and give all those pieces uh, a really good season on both sides. I wouldn't season rabbit any more than you would chicken. It's a delicate meat. Now we're going to go ahead and bacon wrap those pieces. So however much it takes, I usually just about one strip per her piece usually works out just fine. We got some, uh, some skewers over here. Let's see if we can get them out. Let's get us a few of them. May take more than one per per piece, especially on the back legs. All right, so we got it bacon wrapped just like that. Got it seasoned. Then we'll cut off the extra parts of the skewer. All right, because uh, we're going to put them in the Dutch oven. All right, so let's go ahead and finish the rest of them. We'll show you what they look like. All right, so we got all of our uh, rabbit pieces over here. We've got them wrapped with bacon. We've got them pinned. We got some uh, celery sticks, full size stuff over there. We're just going to kind of arrange those around in a random way in the bottom of our oiled Dutch oven. Okay, got a little oil on it. We're going to kind of prop these pieces up on them. All right, so that they're up off the bottom. That's kind of what we're looking for here. And those uh, those celery sticks are going to also add some moisture and kind of uh, braise these as they roast. All right, so there's all of our major major pieces kind of setting up on the celery it might not be perfect but it's okay let's actually try to drag this one over just a little bit so this guy gets up on two kind of keeps him up off the bottom that's kind of what we're looking at with the um, celery so let's go ahead and uh, our fire is perfect right now so let's get this Dutch oven set up on some real campfire coals Hey, right before we do that, let's go ahead and give it another little sprinkle of Seminole Swamp. Top side. Here we go. 
All right, let's get her on the fire. All right, so that's what our uh, campfire coals look like right now. So I'm just gonna bring over my shovel. I'm gonna go real light on the bottom of this. All right, I don't want a ton of bottom heat on that. Burn it up. Let's go ahead, I'll set on number 12. We'll load the top up pretty good because what we're going to do is today we're stacking our ovens. tongs. Take that big one out of there, put it back in, it ain't quite burnt. And then uh, kind of ease those out toward the edges. Okay, so now that we got uh, Most of the coals we're gonna need out. I go ahead and put our squash right over there. That was gonna take a little while. We are going back in for some more coals, but I'm gonna let that burn for a minute. So I can already hear that sizzling away in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get our number 10 preheating right on top of it. Like I said, today we're gonna to stack. All right, so we got that uh, 10 inch stacked on top of the 12. We got some rough cut organic carrots there. They're gonna take the longest, so they're gonna go in first. Let's go ahead and just stick the lid on, let them get a little head start. at those carrots real quick let's get them going so let's go ahead and dump in most of our rest of our ingredients celery Swiss chard stems cabbage and uh, sweet onion put that in there we'll get our tool and mix that in Gonna mix it up. Go ahead and give some seasoning. I'll give a little salt. This is our uh, camp multi seasoner pack. A good amount of salt there. I'm gonna give it some black pepper, of course. Give it a little bit of garlic. And let's give it a little kind, a little, just a little, just a little kind. Don't tell Mrs. Backwoods. All right, give it another quick toss around in there. Let some of that moisture start cooking out of the cabbage. And then we're gonna add some broth. I just have to set this in there by the campfire, get heat up on it a little bit. See how it goes.
let's go ahead and check on our Wabbit and uh, see how it's looking. We've been constantly stoking that top with more coals and that's what we're looking for right there, guys. So let's go ahead and take the lid off of here and uh, we don't want to cook it no more on the top. Pull it off, put it over here on the table. We'll get ready to eat. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull these guys out. Oh man, I wish you guys could smell this. All right, we're gonna pull them out and then we're gonna make a gravy to put in that bowl on our acorn squash. And those, you see how those celeries really helped to keep them up off the bottom, keep them from getting burned. So we put most of our heat on the top and oh, man, there's beautiful fond in the bottom of that pot. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the rest of the celery because it's going to be kind of stringy because those are celery sticks right you don't want stringiness in your gravy so we're going to go ahead and make a gravy from the fond on the bottom let's get those celeries out we'll put them to the side over here on our plate but any of those bacon bits you're going to leave them in there obviously Alright, bringing our Dutch oven right back over here, right on top of the, shook all the coals off down there, we got a couple logs going in there. So now, what I'm going to do is just deglaze the pan, going to make a gravy to go in those squash bowls. I know, I know, yeah, yeah, this is going to just take it over the top. So if you can't stand food pouring, you need to skip the video right now. Here you go. Let's get that, some of that going in there. Just put it back on there so it'll take a little bit of a minute for it to come up. And then we'll stir it in and we'll make a nice gravy. And we're gonna pour that gravy right on top of those squash bowls. Chicken broth going in there, deglaze that pan. Now we're gonna go in with just a bit of cornstarch and uh, thicken it up so it don't get crazy because it's not boiling real hard. We just want kind of like a, a thin gravy. All right, that looks perfect. All right, so that's enough. Go ahead and stir it around a little bit with the uh, wooden spoon make sure it's completely deglazed and we're going to pull it right up off the flyer and that's going to go right in those squash bowls we made earlier all right let's serve up this great campfire meal I'm going to bring over a plate here and uh, we had that rabbit going right up under there keeping warm while we're getting everything else ready Go ahead and pull those skewers out. You don't want your uh, your campers chomping on any of those guys. All right. Oh God, they smell awesome too. Now we're gonna come in here with one of those acorn squashes we did right there, just right on the coals. And oh man, look at that! It it, it makes kind of a bowl. It is super, super done right there too. All right, let's check out the uh, 10 inch over here for the veg. Pull the lid off of that guy, Ooh, super hot. Gonna bring in those roasted vegetables. All right, mushrooms, carrots, uh, green cabbage, onion, and Swiss chard which is gonna be so awesome. All right, so we got this nice bowl. What we need for that is that gravy we just made from the from the drippings, from the rabbit. It is super, super rich and flavorful. And that, my friends, is a camp meal 
that uh, everyone's going to love. Hey, thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet right here from the Green Swamp of Central Florida. If you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking right here for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right over there. And for our whole playlist, cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time. Subscribe to our channel. You can do it right there for a whole... Oh, jeez.